There's side view Rancho and top view Rancho. Everybody understands that? And um, this presentation's really about top view. This top view Rancho, if you're not familiar, there's a couple critical components. Uh, three that exactly, we're gonna get them way more detailed than you need, but I grow these and they're painful as hell. If you think you're gonna do these, you gotta learn the technique and you gotta learn how to call them. This has to be what they consider to be square, okay? These bumps are a um, muscle fat deposit that's called, the, these, the physical pieces here and here are called funtan, F-U-N-T-A-N. The back has to be straight, or you know, curved, but it, it's not lopsided. The finish has to be perfect. This fin ray, lead fin ray on both sides, is called the tail shoulder. If it's collapsed, you can't win. Okay, you gotta realize that this calling process for these is as if you're going to a show, okay? So the stiffer the fin rays the first year, most likely is the fish will win prizes when it's two or three. If you have the lead fin ray more like this, then, um, the normal, you, 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 you just don't have a very good fish. So let's just say, here's the back end of the fish. <clears throat> They're supposed to be equal. Not such a good great drawer. Pretty good on my fish tanks, but you know. So there's a, area here. This is the base of the tail on the fish, okay? This is where it comes down into the tail. This part here is called the oza. And it's a critical piece. When I call my ranchu, this has to be perpendicular to the body, this lead fin ray. And this oza, which is kind of like a platform of cells, okay, before you start fin rays, that has to exist. If you don't have those two items, you can't win, okay? The tail doesn't have to be split all the way, doesn't have to be split at all, but it's best if it's split. If it's split, <clears throat> this ring of cells that encompasses the oza is called the bracelet. If you pierce the bracelet, it's a deduct. If the split goes all the way up into the meat of the fish, it's called inserted tail cord. Loser. They disqualify the fish often. Yes. And it's not just the split. I mean, sometimes your split goes a third of the way down, but you have a rib. It migrates up into the flesh of the fish. So it's it's kind of an ugly deal of uh, judging ranchu. It's the land of calls, you know, and really exacting conditions to get them to go correctly. So um, once the fish are big enough that you can see them and you can put them outside or inside, green water is pretty important. It's important for color, deeper reds. Realize that when you compete in Ranchu that are top view, there's only three color choices, white, red and white, and red. There are no black Ranchu, there are no blue Ranchu, there are no calico Ranchu that can win a Ranchu show. It's only red, white, or uh, uh, red and white. Green water is pretty critical to get brilliant brilliant uh, red color, okay? The other thing is the green water is very, very critical for head growth. Everybody says, oh, you feed them uh, bloodworms. My buddy, uh, Bao Dang, I don't know if you all know Bao, some of us do. Bao's a, uh, a gentleman from Vietnam uh, that uh, lives in Columbus, Ohio. We're pretty great friends. His mom makes really good pho. And, um, but 
he demonstrated that if you grow your fish in green water, you don't have to feed them blood worms and you get the same effect. So it's kind of cool. So uh, a lot of people uh, feed green, uh, have them in green water. A lot of, most people keep them in very shallow water, six inches, uh, less than six inches um, if it's not too hot. More than, slightly more than six inches if it's too hot. It's in the 90s, you're better off in eight or 10 inches of water, okay? Otherwise you're gonna end up with all dead fish someday. Specialized wind food, there are lots of people spending 30 and $40 a pound on specialized when goldfish food. Uh, Hikari, it's got a when, uh, Hikari, Sakai, purple. It's, you know, a little tiny seven ounce bag is about $15. You know, it's outrageously expensive. There's, there's five or six other varieties that all claim to have the best. And I'm just doing some frozen blood worms this year and I'm doing green water and I'm not doing anything else. And even when the fish are really tiny, I'm taking frozen ones and I'm chopping them with a razor blade. Instead of trying to give them you know, something that's this long, I'm giving something that's really tiny. It's been sh sh shaved with a razor blade while it's still frozen. I never thought I'd do that, but I am. You grow the wrong population density. In other words, too dense, too many fish in the tank, the, that lead fin rate kind of goes, eh, you know, so it's not too good. Um, it's best to be able to trade for gen population generations. So we sh tend to sh ship each other fish that are older fish and younger fish mixed as the cross, not siblings. Uh, blood worms, algae, steam eggs. Steam eggs is a new thing <coughs> and it's kind of taken over the hobby for young fish by storm. Any fish over two weeks uh, up to adult will eat steamed eggs. Uh, there's, uh, if you go to our website, the goldfishcouncil.org, there's a blog where it's really detailed on how to do it. And if you have a blender and you have fresh eggs and you have water and garlic powder, you can add other stuff, but that's all you need at that. A skillet with a lid and some coffee cups you can make steamed eggs in a half hour. That's the whole process. You know, that's even cleaning the dishes when you're done. So, and I, you know, I'm now making steamed eggs two and three times a week. And it's pretty much cut, cut my food cost, dry pellet size cost, dry pellet food cost in half. So it's pretty amazing. Water changes gargantuan. The real fanatical people are doing 100% water change twice a week. It's, it's a lot of work. And so I'm not doing that. I'm siphoning the bottoms of my tanks and doing 100% water displacement twice a week. So, you know, I set a timer on, I know what the flow rate is, I flush it all out. On my small tanks, I'm draining 50% off and then filling them back up and I do a manual siphon of, of stuff. So, I'm, screw, I'm playing with sunlight. Um, Sunlight's really important to get deep reds, but I'm finding that the classic way they sh people shade their rancher tubs is not as good as it should be. And I've got some 35% shade cover, which is, you know, you would use, uh, well, it's army surplus, but you know, it's a heavy duty polypropylene cloth. And I, if you have a tub here, that's not shade covered, and the other one's shade cover 35%. The difference in water temperatures is as much as 20 degrees F. That's huge. So, you know, it, it's, it's kind of important. Um, so, <clears throat> this is um, some of my rancher chub, tubs outside, and it's, yeah, it's not very neat. Well, I'm for growing fish. It's not for, you know, necessarily anything. So this is, a cedar frame, not pressurized wood. This is the hardwood cloth, and it's also got metal cloth in case animals walk across it, they're not uh, falling in. And then uh, sometimes a piece of styrofoam for additional shading. And they're all above ground, they're seasonal, 
indoors, they go inside. That's by Russ Taylor, a good friend of ours. And uh, so we have the, the tail shoulder. And we have the Oza. And we have the bracelet. And um, those are critical components. See this, it looks like horns. That's a really weird illustration. And I never really understood why the illustrations were all like that. But as the tail grows, you, you'll see in a minute when we get done, we'll, we'll have these baby fish to look at, and the tail split, okay, like this. And if you have the tail split, as the fish get older, the tail physically goes up like, like this, okay? And so it's bent upwards. And so I always thought that was a flaw, and it's not a flaw at all. What it is, is that the tail gets bigger, and as the tail gets bigger, those two edges fold up. And so those things that look like horns on this illustration are really the tail folding up. And that's not a flaw, it's kind of a cool thing. So. In fact, from the top view, you might assume that that tail is on the same plane that it's flat. You actually don't want a flat tail, the fish can't really swim with that. If you look at them from the side, the lower lobes actually do go out and down a little bit, and yeah. the inner lobes go up. Somewhere. Right. That, that Oza, you said you, you called for that, right? Yes, that's an important thing. Because you can't really see with great detail when you first do your first call. You have a thousand fish. So look at that crow's feet at all? What's that? No, 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 the crow's feet has nothing to do with it. Will that look like it at all? Because no, no, it looks like a little plate. And we'll see that. I've got some live fish for us to look at. You know, but it looks like a little tiny, shiny plate at the end of the tail. You know, it's like, it's like, if you had a tin roof, the, the, the pipe comes down, it looks like a flashing on the base of the tail. You know what I'm saying? Or a roof flashing. And, and it's kind of a cool thing. And it's, it's a simple way to call the fish if you're in a hurry. And you realize you might have a thousand babies. And the game is to get rid of a large number of them very quickly. And the best guys, you could call it a week by just throwing away the ones that are swimming. If you have a line bred fish that like Rob has or I do, you shouldn't have any spikes, you know, partial fins. You shouldn't have uh, any single tails. If you do, it's probably because weather conditions were, or water conditions were horrid. But you know, when I spawn my Hayashis or my Tooks, he does his muscle. You have no single tails, you have no spikes, okay? Um, and, and so you're looking at these fish very quickly. I don't care what you, how good your eyesight is. At two weeks, if you have this call at two weeks, you gotta look for the Oza because you can't see the tail split for sure or it hasn't split yet, you know? And remember with Rancho, it doesn't have to be split all the way. Partial split's fine. And there's a lot of people that'll argue is that a fused tail is acceptable and you can read that it's acceptable. You can't win, but it's acceptable. Okay, so. Um, so the initial four weeks are very critical. For me, I do live brine shrimp 24 hours a day. <clears throat> and so I see these people, they're talking about doing live brine shrimp and I feed them five times a day. And I'm going, these guys really got a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> and so, you know, I get up and I've got all these cones of brine shrimp going and I'll, uh, and I'll let it, one of them settle and I'll suck it down into a beaker and I go through and I just go like this and they get a whole day's feeding at one time. And the only thing I do is make sure there's a, a, a teaspoon, excuse me, a tablespoon of salt, tablespoon of salt per five gallons. And that keeps your brine shrimp going for an entire day. Some people use a little bit more salt. I like using a little bit less salt. But the salt allows the brine shrimp to stay alive and it also inhibits uh, ammonia burn. So, uh, this is a secret, secret piece of my hobby. And only you people can see it. Uh, unless Amy, unless, unless Jenny put it on the internet. But, you, but you, grow these, you grow these in extremely shallow water. Some people will brag, oh, I'm doing two to four inches. I can't keep the water quality good. 
two to four inches. You know, you just can't have water circulation. Mine is exactly six inches. This is a 20 gallon tank, 20 high. <clears throat> this is drilled, see the bulkhead? The tube comes up to this level here. I have a sponge filter sitting over that. And what I do is I go through with a python with a new green hook on it. I get the water temperature exactly right. I hang it on. The water fills up, flows out through the sponge, and I just fill this up. And it looks like it's going to overflow and I put it in the next tank. And then I come back and I'll do it again. So I can do a water change, 100% water change, on this tank in about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. You gotta, it's more difficult when they're really small because you've got to be careful you're not throwing them all over the place. But these are, this was taken this week. These are some young fish that, uh, that are here. And, you know, it's shallow. Why shallow? And there's arguments about this, but it's a combination of maintaining the right tail pitch because if it's too deep, they're swimming up like this and swimming down, and the, the fin rays are soft, right, when they're this small. And so you end up with fish that are, the, 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 the tails, instead of being like this, are like this, and it's no good. They don't swim right when they're adults. And so shallow water, and also the head growth is affected by shallowness. So it's critical that these fish are grown in very shallow water. Uh, I do a daily water change. If I'm going nuts, like when I'm breaking them from pure brine shrimp, which that lasts about two days in my house, they get live brine shrimp every day, all day, for four weeks, okay? They get additionally dry food once a day, golden pearls, and then once they get to this stage, they get steamed eggs, and they also get razor-bladed uh, bloodworms. So I get a block, a little block of bloodworms and a, uh, and a uh, piece of uh, PVC ceiling tile, and I'm sitting there with a razor blade. I chop them up in little tiny pieces, and then just slide them off in, into this thing. And the bloodworms, to me, are very critical for the head growth. And, and but steamed eggs are seem to be doing the same thing for me. So I'm pretty excited about, you know, instead of me buying, I buy. I don't know, 200 pounds of frozen bloodworms a year, at astronomical expense. And so, uh, uh, steamed eggs, uh, whenever we go to the grocery, we buy eggs, so that's pretty good. So, um, gotta grow them pretty fast, get the right tail pitch in my opinion. Here's my electrical tape uh, on top, so, you know, usually there's a date in the line. So these fish were born uh, this picture was taken this week also. These, these were born Thanksgiving week. So they're, they're about two inches long. It, what's critical at this point is that you can see that the lead fin ray is pretty perpendicular. And at this point, they should be having swollen heads. See how that head's thick? It's not pointy like a bullet. It's more square. And so by the end of this month, these fish, this, this peduncle should be thickening. If it's not, I throw them away. And this nose should be getting a fun tank squared off. Sometimes they grow a little bit slow. If they're good, they have the good basic structure, I keep them. Sometimes the smallest fish are the best fish and they just grow slower. But at this point, you've already called at least twice, and this is when it gets heartbreaking. You, you, you know, you got almost uh, 60 days in these fish, and you walk by and you go, uh, he's swimming in circles. He's sitting on the bottom. That one's peduncle is, the, the peduncle is the base of the tail, right? It's too skinny. They go away. And so you've already gotten rid of 85% of the fish. And a spawn, and you get down to this stage, and you stole another five or ten percent. So, uh, but you know, low current, shallow water, pristine water. When you're feeding them this way, they get steamed eggs twice a day. They get bloodworms once a day. They sometimes get pellets if I'm busy instead of steamed eggs. The water has to be pristine. 
if it gets cloudy, if it smells funny, if the bubbles are sticky across the water surface, you're in serious trouble. You just don't know, you haven't seen it yet. But you're, you're on your way to an Aeromonas infection or Pseudomonas infection where they get this bright red body color and they start going away very quickly. So, you know, we have a series of calls. It's, uh, you gotta be ruthless or you, you just don't grow very good fish at these, you know? You shouldn't, shouldn't grow these is what it should not do. Um, so you, you, you initially uh, select for tail spread and tail shorter and nose up, and then you move on. Later, you pick the thickest peduncle fish. And so it doesn't have to have the best head because its mate can have the best head. But this, this is the dominant feature for winning the show, in my opinion, is this has to be thick. And if you see the lead slide that the peduncle is at least 50% the width of the back end of the fish, maybe larger. And some of the pictures you get from Thailand and Japan now, wow, the, I mean, the back end of the fish is like this and the tail is about like this. I don't find it very attractive, but that's what's going on, so. Steamed eggs. You should all make this. I don't care if you grow tropicals. I don't care if you grow African cichlids. I don't care if you grow guppies. This is so easy. It's just nuts, okay? It's an Asian. Um, maybe your wife can correct me, but it's uh, steamed eggs is an Asian basic dessert like custard, okay? And uh, for me, I basically crack a dozen eggs in a blender that's graduated. I add equal volume of water, about a half a tablespoon, no, oh, excuse me, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then I generally add either ethazanthine, the red powder, or spirulina powder, or both. I sometimes add chopped garlic, I sometimes add a vitamin. You basically put coffee cups or, or um, ramekins, shallow dishes, you put it in, I basically have the water boiling in a skillet with the cups in it, you go over and pour, you turn on the blender for less than 30 seconds because if you turn it on longer than that, it all foams like crazy, right? Because it's all protein. And so you flip it on, you flip it off, you go over and you pour this into your ramekins or coffee cups, which the water's gotta be boiling, these ramekins gotta be hot, or coffee cups gotta be hot. You put slam a lid on it, you time it for six to eight minutes. Once you've done it a couple times, you know it's done when you can look at it and go, you can see bubbles rising through, really gelatinous, almost liquidish, you know? And you take it and just a little flick and it comes off your spoon. And they'll sit there and they'll eat for hours. And the bigger fish, it's kind of a game with them, you have a big hunk of egg, you know? and they'll charge right through it and you have an explosion of all these little little pieces of egg. And then they pick on it for a couple hours and it's gone. So here's another picture of my covers. I, I'm really sold on covers. Uh, one is that you don't have herons and raccoons and snakes getting in very easily. But I found that I can change water less frequently outside. These fish are generally bigger now. And um, the fish, when it's 95 out, the water, these tubs are only a foot deep. They're usually filled to about eight inches. The shade is enough to keep them at least 10 degrees cooler. And so I have no fish losses in hot weather anymore. I used to have really struggle, you know, and so it's good. Um, I find that the algae is more stable at the cooler temperature. So there's a shade cloth over the wire, is that the Yes, so if you look at this one, Rob, so this is really a army surplus shade cloth that's 35% shade, but you can buy a commercial greenhouse shade cloth. They use the shade cloth in a rack for like the, the soldiers, um, I don't know what you call it, outside their barracks, so they can go outside their barracks in, in the Iraqi sun 
and, and, and would be much, much cooler. And it was army surplus, you can buy an army surplus, or you can't find it, you just go to greenhouse supply and look for shade cloth and get, and get 35%. And it, it, this is now three years old, and it's just holding up like crazy. And uh, the, the wire mesh is an innovation to, 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 to if little kids or, or animals or dogs and stuff are working across, they're not getting stuck going through it, you know, so. Ah. So, this is the initial call. Can you see that okay? So, you know, you have Goofy fins torn out. Uh, the the mid rib here is fused and it's thick out. Crinkled out. Collapsed out. Uh, up there again to the lead fin razor clamp. It's no good. Single tail, no good. So you want something in which you can see the O's in here and leave fin razor good. These fish, about six weeks old. Uh, I've heard people negatively comment about my fish is that they color up too quickly. And that's because if you're growing them inside, you want brilliant reds and brilliant, I never turn off the lights. You want brilliant indoor fish, just leave the lights on. And so, some of these people will keep these rain chew up to eight weeks before they start to turn color. Mine are turning to four. It has to do with, I just leave the lights on. Why would anyone complain about that? Uh, oh, you know how it is. They're, they're, I'm charging too little for my fish, I think, <laughs> or something like that. So, so um, yeah, which I was saying at TDR room from the yeah. man. Yeah, that's right. They're a tough bunch. Yeah. And so, uh, these are some of my stock from last, that I grew from last year. You know, uh, people, I find out that you can sell inferior fish to people if they have a white head. It's, it, you know, people go nuts for lemon heads. But uh, they, so much so that I can get more money for red and white fish than I can a red fish, which is, uh, if you're going to breed fish for show, um, it used to be red fish only one. Okay? No longer the case. Abruptly changed, and people like red and white fish for show, and they like white fish with just red lips or red eyes covers or red tips on their tails. So I tell you that. My suggestion to you is, if you're going to breed ranchu, is that you always have one fish that's solid red, and that the other fish be either white or red and white. I still believe that it's a mistake to breed a white fish to a red and white fish, and to a red and white fish to a red and white fish. You get too many white fish, and the chromatophore density, giving you the red color, there's not enough chromatophores. And so gradually, you do that for a couple generations, you're gonna have white and orange fish instead of red and white fish. And that's a bad idea. So, questions? Ranchers? Yeah, in, earlier you mentioned about um, the water changes and just yes. do 100% twice a week. Yeah. All, all that talk about the dirty water creating more bigger head, when is that? Well, I think they're all full of crap. That's, oh. that's not oh, so, so, I, I, I think the retentions are correct, but they don't understand biology, okay? <clears throat> I think. When the water's crystal clear, you get very rapid growth, just like they say. Right. But as the water gets stained, it's not because the water's dirty, they're beginning head growth. It's because the chlorophyll content from the algae growth has gone up. And they're taking the algae in, separating it on their gill rakers as if it's, they're a filter feeder. They're digesting the algae and that's giving you the head growth. And so when they say, oh, dirty water gives you head growth, I hate that. Every time I see that, I just laugh. I says, these people don't understand biology. It's all about the chlorophyll. So what you're saying is you don't believe everything you hear on the internet? Uh, yeah. Yeah. This guy, I know who you're talking about, and I know him well, and he's not a bad person. 
but he's not. A, he doesn't have a scientific background. He's an artist, and I think the translation when he was trained from Japanese to English, I think they told him dirty, dirty water, and that's become dirty water forever. Religion, yeah. and religion, right? And it's all about chlorophyll A. Well, there's also another thing. I do believe that filtration for brain tube does seem to inhibit the head. Um, so maybe, you know, somewhere along there, the translation was that it was the dirty water that made the head grow, but maybe it is water flow from a filter that somehow inhibits it. Because we find an air stone or a sponge filter seems to give you better head growth. I had a system that was a, a wet dry filter, continuous pump, and the fish grew fine, but they didn't have good heads. Yeah. There's a friend of ours that grows lots of fish, and he has like a flow through system in his garage, and his fish rarely have much head growth. So I don't know exactly. I, what I, I, I have no filtration at all on my outdoor rancher tubs. Just an air stone. Then I want it green. And if you're used to your green water, you basically know it's time for a water change when the bubbles won't break. Or when it smells funny. There's some crazy people that taste their water. I'd never do that. But <laughs> but um when, when you have a four by four and a half foot tank like I do, and the bubbles are coming up, and the water, uh, the bubbles travel all the way across the other side of the tank without breaking. It's like you need a protein skimmer uh, yeah, growing uh, and doing salt water, you know. And it's you better be doing a water change because your bacterial content or your food over food content is way up. So I don't use any filtration outside for ranchers. Inside. I always have a sponge filter or a box filter. That's the extent. None of, no power filters, no nothing else. And, and you can say, well, you know, I like sponge filters indoors. I don't get much algae growth. And I like the added nitrification capability of a sponge filter. And so I'm guilty and I'm not changing. It's my hobby. <laughs> All right, so let's look at some fish. This one here is pretty easy. <laughs> the, the, the tail is not, perp the leap fin ray is not perpendicular enough to the body. Mm -hmm. Goes away. Easy. This one is bad. This one's bad also? Yeah, this one is almost clamped, right? Yeah. Look at this one here. Can't see. We call that again, dragon. He can't even yeah. swim, Flounder. Yeah. Oh no, excuses. He's he not floating. Swim. Yeah, he's feeling <laughs> like that. The buoyancy going. I think we'll leave him go for a minute. See this one here? It's crooked. Look, the, look yeah, how crooked, crooked he is. is yeah. See? Is that one look good? Is that what you're looking for? Is that the same one that couldn't swim? Is well, I think he swims fine. He I just swim think fine. he's little. You know, oh, okay. but, Maybe but, too much. but look at this fish here, and so uh, let's let's look at positive attributes. The the lead fin ray is perpendicular to the fish. It's really really nice. Yeah. Okay, it's balanced, right? Mm -hmm. And see the oza. I mean, you physically yeah. can see that oza, that little dinner plate, like uh, you know, on the ends of that tail. And so I wouldn't throw that fish away. You know, I, you say, oh, did, hey, it's only keep him alive for a couple more weeks and see if he swims better. This fish, the lead fin raise too, is wrong, right? This one here, crooked. crooked. See how he's, he's swimming okay, but look, he's contorted. See how, how the, what, the lead fin ray on the one side's different angle than the other one? No good. This one's dragging. This one's really dragging. This is why when people say, I want, please send me 10 hmm. show quality. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah. It's like, you know what, I only get 10 out of a swarm. <laughs> yeah. So, him necessarily, like, because to me, he looks like he's dragging too, but... but I'm not uh, sure. He's on the you know, like that, you know uh, he's been in shipment for two yeah, days. That's true. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, let's, let's give him a chance. This guy's not swimming well. His tail's contorted. By the way, that's shipping damage. Um, I, I've never seen that on one of my... I, I opened that up last night, and I said, what the heck happened to that? And I don't know if he got pinched or strong ammonia and shipping, but no good. And... Um, So this one is a really tiny fish, okay? But if you look really, really close, the tail is, I, the tail is split. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I I would be tempted to keep him, you know? A couple more days. Yeah. You're gonna go through these five, six times by the time they're 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 sub adults, and you got plenty of time to get rid of them. There's no sense to get rid of them too early. So. Now, other people say I'm crazy. Well, you know, uh, when, now that the hobby is crazy about red and white fish, you can't tell if these are red and white. So I think I'd keep them if you got room. If you don't have room, if you don't have room, it's a different game. You may as well just go in and say, okay, this is what we call a negative sort, where you're throwing away the bad ones. Sometimes you go in and say, oh, this is a pretty crummy batch of fish. Do a positive sort and just pick out the good ones. So, this fish here I like. Tail split, perpendicular, swims pretty well. Nice size. That one don't swim too well for the size. But we used to keep that one, that big one. Would that be fun? The tail looks split to me. Okay. I'd probably keep him another time. Um, Other people, they might say this peduncle's too long. I'm looking for Rob's opinion. I wouldn't say he say that. Okay, so he stays. This one, the tail's fused. And I saw so, but I think the tail's, see, you can see the tail fused because it's not separated and it looks darker. That's how you tell it's fused, dark right? Line, that dark line, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you don't get that dark line, so. I was wondering how you were catching it. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. 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 Well, I've done this. You know, this once you do the, your own line of fish a couple of years, it's way easier because you know what your fish look like, right? Yeah, it's like those women online where you watch them in Taiwan. Yeah. Sort of through, tossing them. Yeah. Just going. Yeah. So here's, a, here's an interesting thing. Does that see this fish? So that's got a really fat head for that age group. I really like that fish. So if you don't have room, and you got another 800 fish to go through, and you're going to decide I can only keep so many, then you would do a positive sort. We're going to let Rob do that. Well, with the head, another thing you should be looking for is the maximum distance between the eyes and the end of the nose. Gary's right about you want the fat head, but you'll notice some are gonna be blunt, like right at the end of the eyes, the face just ends. Mm -hmm. um, there's not much room there to develop that square head and the food tan and all if there's no head. Well, the other thing is the hobby, the invo head form is a really long face from the eye to the tip of the nose. So, you know, it's, uh, I don't know what that's called, uh, off the top of my head, but people like that, so. Don't accidentally take a drink of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now these look pretty, as far as the head goes, they're, they're pretty uniform and they mm -hmm. do have that uh, potential. Um, they also have a good body length. I think sometimes um, especially with toe size spawns, I see a shortening of the body. You get these little short fish. Wait, crump, crump them through the back? Well, they either have a highly arched back and it makes the body short, and they don't. They end up looking like a ping pong ball when they they get older. So, don't look for something that has a real round contour when they're this little. 
you're better off going for a long body and they'll round up as they get older. So if you don't have enough room, one of the suggestions Want to take a break? would be to take only the bigger fish. And I think that's kind of a mistake because what we find is sometimes the slower growing ranchu are better fish. And so I'll often get to this stage or maybe the next call and the smaller fish, I will put in their own small fish tank. And, you know, they might be farsighted. They can't see the fish. They might have smaller mouths. But uh, Dan Young in Indiana says, uh, I like the smaller fish. They, they tend to grow slower, but they have really excellent form. So don't be afraid to keep the smaller fish but you might want to separate them and grow them separately than these monsters. So. And the big ones, a lot of times what I see happening is they eat so much that you start getting a pear-shaped yeah. body. I mean, even as a young fish, they're yeah. no longer rectangular. They're just... Well, we didn't talk about like that. And that's really a Roundish thing. apple yeah. things, and <laughs> that's not what you're looking yeah. for. Yeah, you, the, if you look at the classic literature, classic American rancher li literature, <clears throat> they used to say that a ranchu body, not the tail, the head and up to the, ba the, the base, the, the end, end of the fish, should fit in a rectangular box. That's a Jap classic Japanese shape. Whereas the Chinese fish is more like this, and it's more pear-shaped. And a pear-shaped fish can't win a show. It's a top few show. Cannot win. Okay, but you can get pear-shaped fish like this. You know, a lot of people just are jamming food in. They're keeping a water quality great. They're jamming the food in. And if you start to see fish that look fat, it's best to not feed for a day yeah. or two days or change food. And so, you know, you'll look at the fish and go, Ugh. three of those fish are, are pear-shaped and you figure out, maybe you're feeding them something with a lot of carbs in it, um, maybe you're feeding them too many eggs, I don't know, but I've already just gone down to one feed a day and focused on water quality for a change, you know? And uh, so it, it's, it's you, can, you can ruin the shape of a fish by trying to grow them so fast you're overfeeding them. And they'll eat, but they're getting the wrong shape. Once they, and you can correct it when they're small, but once they're, I'm going to say, 10 weeks, and you have a pear-shaped fish, it's hard to get it back in that rectangular groove. On the other side, if you're raising Ryukin, you really want to accentuate that deep body, mm -hmm. and it can be to your benefit to really jam them. Just jam them as full as they'll and, and they get those huge distended bellies, and that helps give them the correct Ryukin shape. So it's not necessarily bad to feed young goldfish a lot, but you gotta consider the, the breed standard and how it's gonna affect their adult shape. That's it. Would you put your money on one of these fish? Can you pick out the best one already, you think? <laughs> well, that's an interesting question. I really like that fish. Oh, the one with the big head? You know, some of them it's again, got a big head, but, but see, this little nice one over curve. here. See, that one, this one here especially, look at the thickness of the peduncle compared to the rest of the fish. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm always looking for the, the lead, lead, the tail shoulder to be perpendicular to the body at this stage. It can be stiff, okay? Because as the fish get older, the tail gets bigger and bigger. You need a really rigid frame. If by the time it's three years old, Oya, that's what it, it goes toe side, knee side, Oya. By the time it's an Oya and it's got this big tail, you know, it's got to be pretty sturdy frame. So you have a wimpy tail. By the time it's three, it's not usable. And so something that's rigid at this stage, that's a good thing for me, as long as it swims okay, you know. And uh, Here's an example of a, a smaller fish 
that you might overlook, but I think that's a good one. Yeah, see the Oza? See, yep. see that? Yes, it looks like the flashing on the roof, you know? And uh, it's pretty cool. But see, none of those heads are pointy. And so if I had to throw three or four of these fish away because they don't have room, I would take the skinniest pedunk, but this one would go. That really tiny one might go. But overall, they're not bad. I really would have to take a magnifying glass to th if I was going to get rid of, you know, you told me to get rid of another five of these, half of them. I'd have to get a magnifying glass out and look for tail splits. And you can do that, you know. I have one of these contraptions that you can look through, but I also have a couple magnifying glasses. And, you you know, it's best to, to be, be, if you're going to throw half these away because you can't keep any more, yeah, but it's best to look at tail splits. We were also talking about uh, population density and the importance of that. I raise them in those cement mixing tubs. So do I. Yeah. And I mean, at some point you want a certain number of them because they swim around together in a school and they, when you put food in, they all like rush in. If you call down too fast and there's like five and they lose each other and they're different parts, the food doesn't get eaten, it affects the water quality, there doesn't seem to be the same urgency to eat quickly because it's all over the place. It seems to be a right number that yeah. keeps them growing. Density. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have a range, a number range? You think? For well, it, it depends on the size and relative to the. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the, the what he's talking about is you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you go to the uh, building supply area, right? And they have these concrete mixing tubs. They're 36 inch by 24 inch, I think, and they're 13, 14 dollars. Mm -hmm. They're about six and a half inches tall and they're about this the th 36 inches long and you can drill them you can put a bulkhead thinning in them if you want and you can fill them up to uh, exactly the depth you want and you can overflow them if you want or just use them manually but it's really nice because they're an inexpensive seasonal tub if you want them to be. They stack. And and you, yeah, <laughs> so you can set them up and say you're going to grow out a hundred of these. You might you might go out and buy three of them. Bam, 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 and then you grow them for three or four weeks, and they're ready to go outside, or they're ready to go to a bigger tub, or you're ready to call them again because you're not done calling. If you say these are great and you're just going to put them all in that tub, that's fine. I, in my concrete mixed tubs, I'm currently putting 20 fry. Right. And, and uh, it's not much water, but you're changing the water every day. And the, the water's about four and a half inches at that stage. And you know, you go through them and you look at them. You gotta look at your fish every week. You know, most people you get busy and you're feeding them and changing water, you're not really looking at them. And then you find out at the end of the month that you raised seven or eight fish in that tub that you should have threw away. So it's also sometimes I look and I start getting frustrated because I see faults in some of the fish. Mm -hmm. And you'd be amazed, you do a water change, you pull out all the ones with the faults and all of a sudden you're enriching for the good ones. You're like, all right, now it's a, it's a pretty decent group. Mm -hmm. And uh, people, they often want to see a picture of your fish and they want to judge the quality of the line based on this fish. And it's like, you know, it's a little bit of a misrepresentation because 90% of my fish might have had fused tails, you know, and all kinds of problems, but I'm showing you the, the 20 that I kept and you're making your opinion on that. Yeah. So. And it's kind of, Facebook has done a real disservice to line breeders because if you if I would have posted this group of fish today on Facebook with those fish in it, people would be yelling. everyone picks out the fault. People would be yeah. yelling yeah. expert. Yeah. And so uh, line breeders tend to post less and less all the time because there's somebody out there willing to, you know, you're you're trying to do a service to your buddies and friends. And somebody is taking each individual frame of that video and looking at every fish and going, "Oh, look at that one! That frame at three seconds." And yeah, yeah. So what happens is we're getting less quality education 
because of the negative comments uh, by some people. So I don't care. Yeah, it's the whole internet nowadays. It's getting yeah. worse. <laughs> yeah. But you know, if you just from this viewpoint look at these, look at the Oza vendor. They all got Oza, so that's a good thing to me. You know, do they all have um, tail splits? Probably not. I can't see that well. If if I was sitting down and I had brighter light, I might be able to see. But I would probably use magnifying glass if I had a bunch to go through. So you know, I, you know, I I have a a 13 and 11 year old grandson, and they bring one of their, the three of them will sit there and I'll go through the fish and you tell them what you want, and they've done it a couple times for me now. Wow, they're really good. <laughs>